Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Priscilla and today we are going to be talking about the BMAC. If you're thinking of applying to medicine or dentistry in the UK at some universities, this is an exam that you might have to take. I did the UCAT and then I did the BMAC. And whilst I'm tempted to say that they were both monstrous exams in their own right, I definitely preferred the BMAC because it was more preparable with all the past papers available and felt more familiar because I sat it at school and not at a random test centre and I felt like it tied in more with things that you would expect a future clinician to be able to show. So in this series of videos I'm going to be sharing the best resources to use to revise for the BMAC, some tips and tricks for each section and also ways in which you can use your time effectively when revising for this test. Because let's face it, it's only the start of the academic year and you've already got a lot on your plate. Yes, you applying to medicine, dentistry or biomedical sciences at Oxbridge. Everyone else, they just have to get in their UCAS application and boom, bam, bim, they've already got offers. But for you, it is a much longer process and so that's why I'm making these videos. So what is the BMAT and how would it look like this year? The BMAT is a two hour exam made by Cambridge Assessments to test people on their suitability for the course that they are applying to. It essentially helps universities make a decision on an already competitive admissions process. There are three sections to the BMAT. Section one tests your critical thinking skills and your problem solving skills. Section two is all about your scientific knowledge that you learnt up to the age of 16. So that's your GCSE knowledge on biology, chemistry, physics and maths. Section three is the last section and it tests your ability to write an essay with strong arguments. The test centre where you take the test is usually at your school or at a nearby school. It's usually a written exam, so for me it was a written exam, but this year because of you know what, it is actually an online exam. They're still in the process of figuring out the logistics of how this is going to work this year, but at the moment the BMAT website have said that you will be able to use the online platform before your test. So keep a lookout for this. I will leave a link to their website with all the information about these updates to the BMAT in the description box down below. So make sure you check that out. So now that you have an idea of how the test works, we're gonna jump straight in with the tips. So tips for section one. In section one, you have one hour to complete 32 questions. So that's about two minutes per question. You've probably heard people say that this section has a similar vibe to the UCAT. And it's true, it does. The fact that you may have already revised for the UCAT will give you that extra step for certain question types, specifically the questions where you have to read a passage and then answer the question, and also questions where you have to calculate things. There are a mix of these different question types in this one section. They're scattered around in the paper, so you find that you have to change the way you think from reading to then calculating to then looking at different types of data. For some questions, you have to read a short text and then answer what is the main conclusion or the main assumption or just any other inference that can be made from the text and only from the text. As I'd skim through the text, I found it useful to divide it up into two chunks. So the top part and the bottom part. And that's because by the time you get to the end of the text, you might have forgotten what's at the top. It's such a big time waster to have to reread the text because it didn't register the first time you read it, or maybe you forgot a really key piece of information at the top of the text. Because the conclusion may not always be at the bottom, sometimes you have to tie in what has already been said at the beginning of the text to then what is said at the end of the text. So by the time I've skimmed through the text once and I've mentally divided it up into vague chunks, I know that the top part is talking about this, the second part is talking about that. I also need to look for keywords and then I can go through each multiple choice options to find out which one is the right conclusion. In the multiple choice answers, there will be options that have not been explicitly mentioned in the text and so it cannot be the right conclusion and you can discount that. There will be options that are true but only refer to one part of the text. And you might be tempted to pick that option, but it might not be the correct answer that they're looking for. So try not to jump to conclusions. Make sure you read all the options before you make a decision about what is the correct answer. Usually the conclusion will be the option that gives clear meaning and a really good summary to the text. For these types of questions, you've got to practice skim reading short piece of text in newspapers, magazine articles, 
books and coming to a conclusion on what the passage is trying to say. You need to think about what does the reader want you to believe? What are they trying to convince you of? So the more you practice these skills, the more second nature it will feel when it comes to you doing your BMAT. Other question types will require you to calculate and use your math skills to get to the answer. Look at us, we were complaining about the UCAT calculator only to come and find that there is no calculator in the BMAT. They said, no, you must feel the full force of this exam. But honestly, it means that the numbers are much easier to work with. So rather than having 12.34579%, you get nicer numbers like 10% or ratios of two to three, numbers that you can work with and easily do calculations with. You'll be heavily reliant on your mental maths and your ability to use shortcuts with the way you work with numbers. So you need to practice your mental maths, whip out those timetables and make sure you can do them quickly. Also, those common conversions from ratios to percentages to fractions will be really useful to know. The key here is to be able to do these correctly and with insane speed. Some questions are quite wordy, especially the ratio ones. So you can assign different variables to different numbers, write them down so that you're able to work out the answer. You can probably tell by now that this section is all about practice, doing as much practice questions as you can till you are comfortable and confident with all the question types available. And it's not just about doing past papers for the sake of it, although doing past papers is important. It's about if you get something wrong, trying to figure out how they got the answer and thinking through it so that you're able to think in the way that they want you to think. Because that question is probably gonna come up again, but in a different way. So you need to be able to know how to get to the answer. Remember, this section is all about how you think. So you want to be able to train yourself to understand what's going on behind each question. During the test, make sure you answer all the questions in this section and also in section two. Answer everything. Even if you don't know the answer, eliminate the ones that are clearly wrong and make an educated guess. I'm being serious guys, if you really don't know the answer, just close your eyes and pick one. Because if you leave it, you will definitely not get a mark. But if you put something down, at least you still have a chance of getting a mark for that question. You can find all the past papers on the official BMAT website, so make sure you go and check that out. It dates back from 2003 all the way to last year. Start off by not doing the past papers under timed conditions. Maybe you can do one or two quite comfortably just to see what it's like to work through each question and then you can apply the time pressure afterwards. So maybe the next paper you do, you might wanna do it in two hour, 30 minutes. The next paper you do, you wanna do it in two hours, 15 minutes and so on till you are able to do each paper in two hours, which is the allocated time you have for the entire test. The main resources I used were books. So one of the books I used was this one. This is written by Cambridge Assessments and it's quite a nice short book. It feels like one of the sample papers on their website. So if you're not able to get your hands on this, but you do the sample papers on their website, then I'm sure you'll be fine. But one thing I do like about this book is that it gives an explanation behind each of the answers. And it also gives some really nice tips and tricks for some questions. So like when to use approximation and also when to use diagrams for some questions, because some questions are really wordy. So it's useful to be able to use a diagram for that. And this, this book is quite good in showing you how to do that. Another book I used that I found really useful is the ISC BMAP practice questions. So this is the 400 BMAP practice question, but I know that there is an updated one that has 700 questions. So get that because it means more practice for you. But this is quite a really good book because again, it just gives explanations behind each questions and there are loads of questions for you to work through. Medify have a BMAP course. I personally haven't used it because it wasn't around when I was applying, but I did use their UCAT course and that was really useful. So the BMAT course might follow suit. And the test is going to be online this year. So having that online simulation might be really useful in preparation for the actual online test. Okay, let's talk about time management and organization. One thing I found really useful when revising for the BMAT was to have a revision timetable. I would have been lost without that. And I mean lost. During this time of the term, there is a lot going on in terms of finishing up your personal statements, school tests, and also other commitments that you might have. So having a revision timetable, a realistic revision timetable, will help you to have a visual representation of how much time you need to allocate to each section and ensure that you're revising for them effectively. 
So I'll leave a link to a revision timetable template that you can use in the description box down below, just so that you can organize yourself a little bit. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers, which is just insane. And I only have you guys to thank for that. So if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you do and hit that notification bell so that you get an update whenever I upload. You don't want to miss the next couple of videos because it's going to be about section two and also how to ace section three. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in my next video.